Hey everyone, this is Jacqueline Fernandez and welcome to the Feels Good Podcast. Yes, and I am Amanda Cerny and our guest today is a jet-setting supermodel, successful author, award-winning sought-after dietitian, and the mother of three very successful children, including a genius, Elon mm -hmm. Musk, and also Tosca Musk, who has started Passion Flicks, which all of you have to check out, amazing, amazing films, and Kimball Musk, who I also have worked with before with Big Green, doing big things with Big Green, and she's also the cover of the New York Magazine in 2011, hit the runway for New York Fashion Week in 2016, and held four billboards in Times Square, which wow. may have been a world record at the time also, and became an ambassador for CoverGirl in 2017 at age 69. She did it all while starting over in eight different cities across three countries and two continents while raising three children as a single mom. Her indomitable spirit and yes I can attitude made her a global success story in the prime of her life. Please welcome the ageless, timeless, and inspirational. Timeless. May. So inspirational. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for being on our show, May. I admire both of you. I think you're working so hard and doing such great work. I'm, I love following you on Instagram. Oh, thank you, May. No, we, we're just I, trying to be like you. Yeah, honestly. We're just trying to copy you. We're just trying to live your life. Yeah, that's why we want to hear all your stories so we can literally just apply it to our own lives and be where you're at yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. where, where in the world are you right now? Because I know I'm you're such Angeles. a jet setter. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm moving back to New York next year. What? You know, I moved oh. to Los Angeles because Tosca had twins seven years ago. And when she, uh, so she needed me to help her and she said, you can't go back to New York. So I had to sell the apartment and move to LA. But now she's moving to Atlanta, Georgia, because they have better tax credits for films. And then oh, uh, yep. Elon moved to uh, Texas. So I'm not going to be here alone. I don't have to be. I'll go back to New York where most of my friends are. Oh. So do you, 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 so you prefer New York to LA? Yes. You're a, you're a New York girl. Uh, I like I the East Coast so many, too. I have so many great friends and uh, they, uh, I would visit them often. I mean, because I was flying to New York twice a, twice a month for work, you know, either modeling or speaking engagements. And uh, then, of course, I did my big book launch in New York. So, you yep. think, um, so I mean, they, they all thrilled I'm coming back. But, May, you've traveled so much. Where would you say is one of your favorite places to go to? Um, I still, I love so many places. You know, I had a great time in China. Um, I love, I had a great time in India, a uh, great time in Hungary. I love London and mm. England, uh, you know, and then uh, I love uh, Canada. Of course, I was born in Canada. The, the accent is because my parents moved to South Africa when I was two. <laughs> and, I was, and then I moved back to Canada at uh, 41. Yeah, wow. because my kids wanted to go there. And, wow. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, you make moves. I mean, I, I don't purposefully move cities, but you you move a city be or a country because you're getting out of a bad situation or you want to get into a more interesting or better situation. And uh, each move is painful. I don't know how many times you've moved. Have you moved a lot? I have. I have. <laughs> Really? Yeah, you've you've done. Um, you you were based where first, Amanda? Oh well, mine was within the states. I'm not as like. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could say it was like South Africa, Canada, <laughs> but mine was uh, just Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Iowa, New York, Florida, and then, that's still a lot. Yeah. yeah, but each move is is traumatic because things go wrong. So mm -hmm. you plan you plan your move, and then the truck doesn't come, and then the, your things break, and then you're packing things wrong, and it happens. And then you can then you go to the next place. The electricity doesn't work, and the taps don't work, and you know it's each time there's tra there's drama. And uh, but that's so funny, maybe because you're moving again next year. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I so nicely planned, and of course. That a woman makes a plan is <laughs> my book, even. Yeah. But even so I know there's going to be delays or there's going to be changes and uh, all sorts of things. You never, you know, 
I just have to. But there's uh, there's also such uh, a thrill in it as well, right? It's also there's something exciting about I'm moving house. Like I've only really ever moved house. I I did the major shift to India when I was in when I was about 21, um, and then here I've just really just been moving house. And next week I move to a house, and that's like really exciting me right now. <laughs> Where did you move from? It so was- I was well, yeah. I did. Um, I grew up in the Middle East, so that was in Bahrain. Um, I studied there, I schooled there, and then I did my university in Australia, in Sydney, which I loved. Um, Love Australia too. I've never been. Yes, and then I I interned in Sri Lanka. That's where my father's from. So I interned there at a a TV station, um, a youth station, a youth TV station uh, for like about a year. And then post that, it was just straight to India to do some modeling, um, didn't think it would turn into acting. It did eventually turn into acting. And then I've just been here ever since. So again, we've all moved so much. Yes. Yeah. Now now we can virtually chat and catch up and, and yes, (laughs) it was impossible to be able to do this before. And now all of a sudden everyone's in different parts of the world chatting away. It doesn't matter what, you know, which country you're living in soon, probably, what planet you'll be living in oh, no. soon. <laughs> excitingly that's, that's so but true. May, you started modeling at such a young age i mean uh, you know um i i know me and amanda have also started like we started working super young but you started modeling at around 15 so this was when you were in canada no then i was still in south africa i was at school uh, my, my, my mother's friend had a modeling school and she said gave me a free modeling course. And I said, what? I don't care. I was a science nerd, you know. I didn't think about things like that. Although I liked fashion, I would make my own clothes because in South Africa, fashion was six months behind. So when I wanted to make bell-bottom pants or mini skirts, I pretty much, you can't buy them. So I would make it myself. And wow. um, my mom taught us how to sew. And then she sent me to pattern cutting so I could buy a pattern and then cut it, uh, cut it to, um, to suit the new fashion. So then I did like fashion. And then um, I did the modeling course. And then the next thing she says, uh, I need you to do a runway show and book me for one. And then she paid me. And I'm saying, what? She said, what? Pretty <laughs> clothes and walk around. And, <laughs> And that's when it started, but I didn't let it interfere with my studies because, of course, it was just kind of a hobby. And I would then just do the runway shows evenings or weekends. But, uh, and anyway, schooling, schooling was very strict in South Africa. There's no way you take off for, for a modeling job. And yes. then I went on to do a Bachelor of Science degree. And again, the modeling continued, which was so bizarre because they really weren't using models older than 18. And I was getting up to 21 already, yeah. At 20, oh, I, was, I won beauty competitions, yeah. Jeez. So, which like, at 21 was considered old at that time, yeah, like modeling? Oh, yeah, for 18. Pretty much at 18, uh, after 18, you were considered quite old. But and now yeah, you're now, still 72. Yeah. <laughs> at all. <laughs> Pat, did you notice a, a change in that mentality, though? like throughout the years, like has that kind of stuck around of like, oh, like 21 is a little bit old for modeling. And then nowadays, do you feel that's still the same thought process? Well, you know, when I do runway shows, I'll be the only whitehead, uh, older model. And there'd be sometimes 150 young models. And they all want selfies with me because they all think they're getting to 20 and maybe nobody will book them again. So when they see me, then they say, oh, there's hope for us. There is hope. Yeah, exactly. I well, love that. Yeah, I mean, definitely an inspiration and also like paving the way for so many other women that, you know, really enjoy that career and that's what they want to do and taking off those limitations that are kind of like put on them. Cause I, I, I feel like a lot, I feel like a lot of agencies, even like when they sign new models, like the first thing they, they're like, all right, well, we got to get you to work because you know, tick, 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 tock. Yeah. <laughs> we, all, we always say that. Like, I mean, for, for me as well, being an actress, when I first started, it was like, listen, do as many films as you can, um, do whatever you can, because actresses have a shelf life. Actresses mm. have a shelf life. Yeah. And um, it was always like when you're, if you're over 30, you know, you can slowly start phasing out because acting's not for women over 30 years old. <laughs> and, you know, then it's, of course, like you have these amazing women. I mean, like there's, there's Meryl Streep and, you know, um, 
I mean, Should not to say, but yes, yes, to be done. <laughs> just, they're all doing such amazing work, but like, and I do really believe, and I want to believe this as well, that the world is changing and there's so much more space for just all sorts of different, just people, different from different nationalities, um, just gender, sex, all that kind of stuff, age. Um, but uh, yeah, it just starts with certain people. And one of them is you for sure, me. I really feel like you have really set the bar for so many things and paved the way. Yes. Well, <laughs> I was saying, you know, Tosca has her own platform called Passion Flix, which is a, available worldwide. And she does, takes best-selling romance novels and makes them into movies. She made wow. a movie with where the couple fall in love and they're in their 50s. And I was oh. so about that so you know um, <laughs> they, they all love stories and uh, and then she does a different uh, um, she it's very varied her, her um, movies a, a gay couple a uh, interracial couples you know um, I know all a movie with all black people because yeah. the author was, was uh, black and I don't know if you call, if black is insulting in in, in India or because of that no. in South Africa, because um, they aren't all African American. Some of them are English. <laughs> are they African English? Yeah. I don't know what they say in England. If they say uh, that's an African English person, I don't know. I, you know, you have to be very careful now with saying anything. Of course, you upset someone. Yeah, but the yes, point is, um, I no, was absolutely. very proud that, that she has this variety of. Uh, of, of actors in it. They're definitely Indian actors in it. Too. And she yeah, was, I mean, like, she was doing that even before it was like, um, it's so weird to call it a trend because it should be something that we always do all the time. And she's been yeah. doing it even before it was like in the news as like, and now everybody cares. Like she was including showing representation for all different types of people and you know, kind of like paving the way, like you're paving the way yourself and your sons are like, how, how did you create this? <laughs> how did you do this? <laughs> oh gosh. I, I just have the best kids ever. They really care about <laughs> other people and they care about the planet. And uh, with, with Tosca's movies, by the way, it's female directors mm -hmm. and yeah. women get paid the same as the men. And age is not a problem, obviously, because she's putting me in as an extra this off. Uh, I'm doing a shoot at a gala with her uh, today. <laughs> um, I don't <laughs> always do that because I'm busy around the world. Being <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, have my COVID, you know, had to have my COVID test and all that because they, they oh. test there three times a week, you know, for everybody gets tested for COVID. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's just great. Now, the thing is, when women are, are ignored or they say but 30 or 40, you're over with, who's telling you you're over with it? Because if it's a female telling you, then that's not right. Women should be supporting women of all ages. But yep. if men are telling you, then you have to form your own company and show that women are powerful and intelligent and, and, and capable, you know. And that's yep. why if people are are telling you you're getting old for movies, then it's usually a man. <laughs> and then you start your own company and you make sure that that can't Absolutely. be Absolutely. That, mm -hmm. that is actually what a lot of people, and, but you know, like right now, that is actually what, a, what quite a few actresses have had to do. And I think um, in Hollywood as well, like if you take a look at what Reese Witherspoon has Reese been doing. The best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's fantastic. It's so inspiring because like that's exactly it's I, I know even here it's inspired so many women to do the same thing. And they're like, you know what? Okay, if they're not making roles for us, um, if they've stopped making roles for us and it's just like we're we're kind of out of work, why don't we just do it ourselves? And quite a lot of like actresses have been doing that. It's also, it seriously inspired me to like also think of doing something for myself and uh, just t be able to tell the stories that we want to be able to tell. Cause if no one's going to be writing them for us, then we're the only ones who can actually like, you know, make that difference and, we and do what do, we can. We should do something with Tosca. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we should all get together and like come up with like an amazing story and tell yeah. us. <laughs> we got ideas. Great idea. Oh my goodness. 
Yes. <laughs> I, I kind of want to dive into, because I mean, you have two master degrees, one in diet, like dietitian. Yeah, I and lots of science to be so here I was this science nerd and then I would model part time, but I didn't tell people or anything. And then when I got married, I had three kids in three years. That don't recommend that. That's hard work. You're pretty brain dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then when I was 28, um, they wanted me to be model uh, mother of the bride. So again, I did that, but I had a private practice and I never let them I mean, people who would come to see me for uh, doctors would send their patients to me for diabetes or heart disease or or just eating well, you know, losing weight mainly. And uh, I just I never let them know that I'm a model. But sometimes they'd bring a magazine. Is this you? You know, and I say yes, I do that sometimes <laughs> because you need to focus on the patient. You don't focus on yourself. And oh, I'm so fabulous. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> And uh, so, uh, so I supported my kids mainly as a dietitian, and then I modeled part time. It's only when I became a supermodel <laughs> that, mm-hmm. uh, or when I moved to New York and I did these huge TV commercials, that uh, my then my modeling would get a little priority because I got paid better. Whereas uh, before that, in uh, tra- uh, in Canada and South Africa, the payment was the same, so I, I wasn't encouraged to go to modeling. And uh, I would, um, and I would make sure that my modeling job covered as much, paid as well as the as the nutrition uh, as missing a day's work in in with my with my clients, you know. So mm. I had to calculate things, you know. Well, uh, yeah. No, I, so, I, I, so I you, wanted, can, can we get some? Can we get some free nutrition advice from you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's all in my book. Is it? Uh, I follow common sense and science because I have to follow science because I'm, I have two master of science degrees, and I have to follow what the evidence shows is mm-hmm. the best diet. So the best diet, what they're showing is the Mediterranean diet is number oh. one. The Dash diet, which is a hypertensive diet, which is similar. The flexitarian diet, and that's what I follow, which is vegetarian at home, and then meat, fish, or chicken outside, and then I bring. Okay. Pieces back, and then I have some more because I'm not a great cook anyway. And then the Weight Watchers diet. So they just basic oh. eating, well, uh, eating real food, and um, yeah, and limiting the um, the fried chicken, the burgers, and the desserts, which I love. Oh, and then, oh I know. I, I, I love the sweets too. But yeah, it I doesn't love- even look like you have a sweet tooth. Like you're just oh. like in the best shape ever. Well, I, I, I was a plus size model actually for 10 years. I gained 30 kilograms or 65 pounds. And uh, because I just said, I'm, you well, my fiance had gotten somebody else pregnant and moved in next door to me. And the wedding invitations were all printed and I wouldn't send them out. And so um, wow. I felt very sad and I ate my way through that one. <laughs> and, oh, <laughs> Gosh, you have three desserts at a time, and I thought, well, at some stage I'll stop gaining weight. But you actually don't stop gaining weight if you eat like that. You gain weight. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Then, then I was getting to forty years old, and my cholesterol went up, and my back and my knees were hurting. And I said, well, I'm either going to go on drugs and painkillers, or else I'm going to have to eat better. And I am a dietitian. I lectured on it. I would give people, I'll tell them, do what I tell, do what I say, don't do what I do, you know, because I'm very funny. But, um, and <laughs> 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 right, funny, obviously, and right, and clever. <laughs> so then I, then I lost um, the weight and I've kept it off for 30 years. And in my home, there are, there are no, no sweet foods at all because yeah. one slow day or one bad news day, which is daily, you know, the news is always so bad. And yeah. I would finish off a box of chocolates. So oh, I can't have it you're a stress eater. Like, <laughs> yeah, but that's so great. Honestly, I know, I know that's not a great thing, but like, I, it's so great to hear that you're like that because I'm a stress eater as well. I, you know, I th- there's so much pressure, right? At work and, um, and sometimes you just have a terrible day. I live alone. So for me, it's like, if there's something in my fridge, I've come back home to an empty house and I'm alone. Oh my God, help me. Like, well, so I do like, I, 
I banned them from my house. Yeah, I think that's kind of a big solution for everyone. You know, if you have yeah. something that you love that you pick up in the grocery store that you know is not probably the best thing for you, but you love it, you're going to eat yeah. it at some point and then you're going to get more because you ate it. And then it just, it's a cycle. So just like, I think that's what helped me a lot too. And I know May, <laughs> like it's not... I don't I, like I, I know vegan probably isn't meeting like the Mediterranean <laughs> diet, but oh, yeah. <laughs> when, whenever I uh, veganism really helped me cut out a lot of the stuff that I ate way too much of like the dairy. I was like mm. cold turkey, no more dairy because I was just eating like a freaking whole thing wedge of cheese i would i would travel a lot to europe and every time i would go through amsterdam i would just get like the aged cheese and like get pounds and pounds of it and i just eat so it yeah time. it's so good yeah, but now but now amanda has vegan cheese <laughs> yeah it's true. which is good I, I, it, it, like some of it's processed. So yeah, no, vegan foods can be very processed mm -hmm. and you know, you, you have to do what works for you. If you, I had vegan patients and I would have to, they could still be obese if they ate uh, vegan cookies and fries and drank too much wine, you know? Yeah. So yeah. It, it wasn't that vegan made you slim, but it, obviously you have the formula right, but you still need to balance it well for yourself. Now, when it comes to delicious cheese, I don't have that in my fridge either. I have very <laughs> plain cheese that you don't die for. I mean, bring me a brie and I'll finish off the whole thing. <laughs> oh. Important. bring it on and <laughs> um, so i don't have it at home but if i do go out i can overeat a lot and mm -hmm. then i know i'll gain three pounds overnight and i have like a week i have to eat perfectly again to drop those three pounds because otherwise it stays on you yeah and, you know, and i think that balance is so good too because it's not like to say you can never have what you crave ever in life and you're just stuck to bland things like in your prime example of that you still eat what you enjoy but in moderation so yes, yes but if you bring me a tub of ice cream i eat the whole tub you know i have no control on that so don't bring me any ice cream well they but say oh, that's like a drug so i, know, I mean, I mean when, when people say they died of a drug overdose i said well i would die of a chocolate overdose yeah <laughs> Which is because it's delicious way to go, you know, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's your drug of choice. That's mine. I mean, yeah. Not chocolate. <laughs> yeah. The same way we trust essential workers to provide the care they give to us, our families trust us to give them a safe and protected home. Today's episode is brought to you by Clorox. When it counts, trust Clorox. Our community here is trust Clorox to keep places like hospitals, grocery stores disinfected. So I know I too can trust Clorox to provide my home with a safe environment at home we can all enjoy. That is why I trust Clorox Regular Bleach. By mixing a one-third cup of Clorox Regular Bleach with one gallon of water, when used as directed on hard, non-porous surfaces, it kills 99.9% .9 of germs and bacteria on a variety of surfaces. From our kitchen floors to counters to bathroom tubs to, of course, laundry wipes. I know I can count on Clorox disinfecting products to give myself and my family the best home we deserve. I use Clorox disinfecting products at my home to keep my floors clean, my door handles clean, and just everything clean because I got a little puppy running around. For me, it's important to share with loved ones and the public in general how they can give the most care for their loved ones because when, when it counts, counts, trust Clorox. Feel good. So May, you released a book last year. Um, a woman makes a plan. I thought I would show you some. The Japan cover, the Turkey cover, America. I know. I have all different them. covers. I know. Yes, they've been translated in so many different languages. Like, and I keep seeing those like everywhere. It's been every every month you have a new announcement. It's been translated into this language. Been translated into this language. That's amazing. It's so, amazing. did you do the whole? Did you do the whole tour, like the book tour, with that? Well, I can only do it virtually now. Are they all oh. one in their countries? And and it, we did have some international tour book launches uh, booked. And of course, everything was cancelled. So it's all oh. virtual. But we're doing a lot of interviews. I mean, sometimes it would be something like um, uh, Germany in the morning and Russia at lunchtime and uh, uh, China in the afternoon and South Africa at night. I mean, you know, yeah. so you can do that. Oh, well 
a woman makes a plan, you've got into some really intimate and personal details in that book, um, mainly also giving encouragement to girls in abusive relationships. So like, how deep did you have to go while you were writing that? And what was that experience like? Well, first of all, I was told to, to, to dictate my, my life and then uh, what, and so that I have some advice to give from every section of my life. And so the adventures in the Kalahari Desert, that was easy, going to study for a Bachelor of Science degree in Afrikaans, which means I had to learn a new language. That was hard, but still yeah, I did it. And then, um, then my abusive marriage, I did a chapter on that. And then after I read it, I said to the editor, please take that chapter out. But my children, Elon Kimball and Tosca individually had said to me, you talk about your struggles because you've been perfect on Instagram mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and people will think, oh, first of all, you're just, in, you know, your life has just been easy. And um, so I, I kept that in, but I wasn't happy to, to keep it in because you don't like to share abuse, you know, with anybody. Yeah. And my two brothers and my twin sister said, we had no idea what you were going through because we just knew we couldn't see you because you were so busy, but I was bruised, you know, and also I wasn't allowed to see my family or any friends. And that you'll find is common in a, in an abusive relationship. And I'm insulted every day, you know, um, you're ugly, you're stupid, you're boring. That's why we have no friends. But he would insult me in, in public as well. And only when I ran away with the three kids, you run away, but you're terrified too because he's made a lot of threats if you should ever leave. Um, then you uh, you run away and you find out everybody just was, was so happy for me. And they all, um, uh, they just said, wow, you know, we couldn't come near you because he was so insulting. Mm. And uh, so... I, I escaped and I escaped with my life, with my, with my children. And uh, then he sued me for nine years after that because, you know, I'm a bad mother. And, uh, and then I, only when I moved to Toronto could he stop suing me. And then my funds were blocked. So I had to get find a rent controlled apartment. I mean, this is all in my book. And we were happy. And people say, why? Why am I so happy, you know, sleeping on the carpet <laughs> with my kids? In a, in a rent controlled apartment. And it's because he couldn't reach me there. So mm. other women are not as fortunate as me. I was fortunate in that I um, had a, a occupation. I was a dietitian. I couldn't rely on modeling, although it continued surprisingly. Um, so I was a dietitian and, uh, and I could do my master of science degrees with both of them. They had scholarships for me. So I didn't have to um, pay any money for it because I didn't have any money for that. And then also, um, uh, some, some men are even more vicious and will come after a woman physically and, and hurt them. So some women will be in a worse position than me that they can't support their children. Um, so, uh, but I could only share what I, well, what I went through, but the, the DMs on Instagram and on Twitter and that when they read my book, they say, I'm in that position. I'm getting out now, or I was in that position. And I'm now inspired that life can get better. It's, and, it's so, crazy how sharing your story can inspire and help so many people. I'm so happy you kept that chapter in there. You know, yeah, I'm sure you changed a lot of lives with it. Yes. And uh, uh, yeah, so there is hope, but you, you can't have. So in, when, when people are saying to actresses uh, that you, you're going to get old and, and you won't have any work, you got to change those people because that's not nice. And you you got to mix with nice people. You change that and you make sure you mix with nice people because there's many men who support women. So mm -hmm. it's not just, um, but there, there are many men who will keep them down. And uh, you've got to be um, in charge of your own life. And I think you two are doing a great job, a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> hey, that was so like, I mean... Thank you so much for sharing that. I know it's in your book as well, but like to be able to talk about it, you know, and uh, continuously share that, trust me, that's like, it, it's really put me into, you know, a zone as well where, you know, I mean, I'm sure all of us have been through some kind of trauma 
or just some kind of you know downfall or just like a really bad time in our in our lives and you know what when you when you hear it from someone who that you who you look up to and you're like okay wait but she's also been through something like that um but look at her now and she's just like she's wonderful and positive and pushing through um it really just makes you you know think how strong we all are i think a lot of us forget that we really forget our internal strength and the minute the day we realize it you know things change and i love people who actually speak about these things um because you know i can i i've been through certain situations in my life and the thing is when you don't really have someone to you know to, to discuss it with or you know someone's people are not speaking up about it you yourself don't know what to do yeah. and um and you hide and you you don't know where to turn um but then it's like you know when we when you actually have people making a conversation about it you're like okay wait a minute there are other people out there and um i'm so happy that you know like you're you're actually talking about it because it it will and it, it has already but it will change so many more lives um thank you yeah. you know that you will still go through many stages where your internal confidence is knocked out of you you will go through it but as you get older which I'm saying aging is great. Um, you, <laughs> you've been through it, and you can you can see. Okay, I'm in a really sad, unhappy situation. I'm being knocked down. They're trying to take away my confidence. Um, yeah. Then you can get out of it quicker. And I mean, yeah. I stayed in bad relationships and bad situations too long because I thought I could change people, and I thought I could make them understand that I'm a good person. I'm very talented, or I'm very uh, intelligent, or I'm very, you know. whatever a nice person or whatever and they would still pull you down so um you need to, i every day a guy i dated i would help him with his business i would promote, you know really do good things for him and they never i mean there's only one guy i actually dated he was my german boyfriend who who sent me to the good institute so ich kann deutsch sprechen so he was really good yeah oh, my wow. books Yeah, my, my books just come out in German, so I I have it's feel like to to speak, but I'm not I great. love it. No, so, hey, I mean, I'm picking up on a little bit because Johannes is from Austria, so he speaks German. So I'm like, oh, I know. Yes, I know. <laughs> also, je parle français because I like to speak French. I studied French in school, and then I kept it going. And I can I can I can Afrikaans, but I'm fluent in Afrikaans, which is very similar to Dutch. which also helped me yes. when I studied German because the verb is at the end of the sentence. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's a hard 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 language. <laughs> I am German? Yeah. I it's just it's so different. But I I think what's so cool is that nobody t- told you to learn these things. Nobody uh, yeah. was like, "Oh, send May off to private school and get her educated yeah. and all these things." But you yes. did that on your own because you're curious. and curiosity can be a great thing it's actually one of the best things and yeah. y- you taught yourself you found ways to learn new things and i think that's what's always made you able to grow and get out of things and you know be where you are today yes i you know i i'm terrified of boredom so even <laughs> when I, when the lockdown happened i said i'm going to be watching german movies and french movies and dutch movies keep my languages going <clears throat> but then of course Then I got a young assistant to put me on TikTok, and then, and then she did exercise videos with me, and then my book went international. So I have had a very busy quarantine and I'm very excited about it. But otherwise, I don't know how I could have, you know, kept myself going um, mentally, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, do you you also have a um, um, a nonprofit? You actually have two. You have the Big Green. and you have the dress plant. for success which i <laughs> so, think is amazing all right so big green and 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 amanda really was a, a great supporter of that we where they go to underserved schools where children don't have access to fruits and vegetables and they have containers where the children can plant seeds they teach them i mean and wow. i was teaching them <laughs> to plant mm. seeds and then amazing they, they walk to them and then they grow the the vegetables or fruit and then they pull the carrots out of a dirt and they get so excited about vegetables and then they taught how to prepare it and eat it and then they can take home to their to their family and teach them about nutrition so it was 
magnificent. It was 650 gardens and, and Kimbo, my youngest son, wanted to do um, a thousand gardens. But then, of course, lockdown, all the schools were closed at the beginning yeah. of the year. So oh, then, no. Hey, you, but, That's hey, you guys didn't lockdown. stop. You guys didn't stop there, though. Lockdown happened and you're like, all right, here's some at-home kits. <laughs> oh, amazing. No, but it's so funny, Amanda, the first time I met May. Um, oh, yeah. And- well, yeah. Wait, hold on. When did you, yeah, when did you two meet? Because no, this the, is too- the, funniest, the funniest thing is, and, and luckily, thank God for Instagram, we were able to reconnect on Instagram. But the first time I met her, it was at this... Um, uh, it was at this fashion event. Wait, it was Imran. Of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was a dinner. It was a dinner for um, the business of fashion. Mm-hmm. And it was in LA. And I was, I was in LA at the time. And two of my friends, they, I mean, they run it. They're, they're from Mumbai and London. And they said, hey, just come down for dinner. And that's when I met May. And May, I remember exactly what you were wearing. It, it was a beautiful purple outfit and you know you just stood out like in the crowd and I had I was just like I was staring at you because I was just, I was so mesmerized I was like wow she's so beautiful and look at her outfit and that purple and her hair and her face and then when we got introduced they're like oh it's Mae Musk and I was like oh my god this is so cool and I remember mm. we had such a such an um a lovely conversation like from that minute like I was just I was super inspired you had no idea who I was and you know but you were still giving your time to me and, and chatting with me and just discussing we were discussing so many things I remember what life is you know in Mumbai and 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 then I mean I, I didn't see May for like about a year and um we just, you know, I reconnected with her on Instagram. I was just, you know, I was like, oh, I wonder how she's doing. And then I was seeing news about your book as well. And I was like, I have to connect with her again. And then I, I just think social media is such an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Amanda met on, on, on Instagram. And I mm-hmm. think it's just such a great way to like build connections and build relationships and reconnect as well. So yeah, and that's, that's our love story. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I, it's all like... Obviously, May, you can tell we're such huge fangirls of you. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think everything we say, we're like... It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> you would be fangirls of a, se- a woman in her 70s. I mean, it's just weird. But then that time, well, that's what I found when I work with younger people is that they, they are so... They just want to absorb everything I was saying. And they kept on saying, you've got to write a book. You've got to write a book. And then the followers on Instagram said, you've got to write a book. And and that's why I wrote it. But again, I didn't really think I had a story. But every, people relate to different stories in my book. There's 28 mm-hmm. little chapters. Absolutely. <laughs> I I think it's a lot of times you tell, like, you know, you have conversations about your own life, your own story. And it's so, like, old news to you because, and you're like, oh, whatever about it. But yeah, it's surprising how impactful it can be to other people because, and that's you being humble also, by the way. I mean, you've been through a lot more than a lot of people have in their own lives, but yeah, I'm happy you're sharing it. (laughs) (laughs) Just that you you need to try new things. You need Mm -hmm. to get into a better situation. That's why I'm moving back to New York. I mean, I'm so excited (laughs) for that content, by the way. Yeah. The, oh the yes. New York content. <laughs> I feel like New book. When I I feel like the whole look today is very New York too. I'm i feel like you're you're, you're ready. You're ready, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you're ready for it. <laughs> well, we we have a fun thing that we do. It's uh, random fun facts. Yes. So <laughs> we're gonna go through those really quickly. I, so I our, bet you may I bet you may already knows all about them. Should we like, yeah, no that probably. one. Yep. Yeah, that that oh, would yeah. be a, that, that would be a good uh, a good drinking game. How many <laughs> yeah. does May already know? <laughs> All right, number one: when a woman is speaking to a man she finds attractive, she naturally speaks in a higher pitch. Ooh, I didn't know that. I didn't but know now that. that I think I about it. Hi. Now that I think about it, it's true. Well, hi. How are you? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, May's like, no, I don't do that. I can't remember. <laughs> that when I've found an attractive man, it has been wa- a while, but um, I don't know oh. if I went into I mean, but if that's what it is, then... Yeah, but yeah. I feel like you're an exception because yeah. your accent is just so, like, soothing. 
and it's, it's just like good the way it is. So no, you just I, I think, speak I like think this Amanda, and... it's the other way around. If like when a guy speaks to me, his voice becomes a higher pitch. <laughs> Boom. That's what it is. That's it. <laughs> it's a reverse with me. It's a reverse. Uh, <laughs> All right. Okay, number two. Fact, num- number two. Newborn babies have a natural reflex reflex to swim for the first four to six months of their lives. This instinct then disappears and must be retaught. Ooh, I well, yeah, I know that babies are natural swimmers, but I didn't realize that it it goes after a couple of months and then they have to relearn it. May, I just did you, it like, oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I want to yeah. know, did you ever take your, because have you seen those videos of when people throw their babies in the pool and they just like yeah. bob back up? No, I, I didn't. <laughs> Do that. That's, that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> it, apparently, it's scary. Yeah. it looks terrifying, but a lot of people do it apparently because I guess they like it. Just teach it if they fall in the pool, it teaches them. But it looks like traumatizing. <laughs> also, I, I just see those videos and I'm like, is that normal? Is that what moms do? <laughs> it looks kind of scary. <laughs> I didn't know about it in the time. Don't forget. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I had the guts to throw my kid in his pool. Even if I knew it was a swimmer, I'd be like, no, <laughs> let's not do this. It's funny how like when you're not a mom yet, you literally know close to nothing about babies and how they work. At least me, like anytime <laughs> I see my friends' kids, I'm like, oh, like, can they speak yet? Like they're um, six months old. <laughs> like no they can't speak yet <laughs> i'm like oh okay <laughs> but I, okay, anything i feel like that goes back to education though like you educate yourself about the things that like you need in your life at the time or that you're like aiming towards and for me that's kind of like my thought process when it comes to babies like i'll learn when i get there oh and the yeah thing is when i was 21 i had a job that i had to give lectures on infant feeding and i remember talking is giving the talk at the hospital and the matron the head of the nurses she says you haven't even had a child what do you know and I was following research work and then I had my three kids and actually talk about their food, what I fed them as well and um, uh, you're right you really need to have a child before you can talk about infant feeding if you can't just follow the science yeah ah oh, see <laughs> okay that's good I don't I don't feel as bad <laughs> no so thanks well, our next fun fact is the desire to eat or crunch ice can be a sign of iron deficiency. Mm. Mm. Well, as a dietitian, it's called pica. Pica is an, uh, when you eat something that's not really edible. And I didn't come across it much. And I, I was in private practice for 45 years with, uh, with people with eating disorders. I, I didn't come across anyone who had pica in, regarding chewing ice. Because if you're chewing ice, it might be to lose weight, and then you actually are not eating iron deficient food, uh, iron containing foods. Mm. Um, again, mm. I um, uh, haven't come across that much. Have you come across it? Um, no, I mean, I'm sure yeah. that my iron levels, I can get them to a better place, and I never chew ice, but. And maybe I'm an exception. I yeah, don't know. but that is true, actually. I think like, oh, but there are some people who love just, you know, they, they have this thing. My about dog. Just, <laughs> you know, oh. <laughs> is he low in iron? I think we should check up on him. Yeah. <laughs> he loves ice. With vegans, you know, you, the, the two main nutrients you have to be concerned about is iron and vitamin B12. But I'm sure you're figuring that out too, because you look very healthy and happy. Yeah, well, they <laughs> yes. yeah. And I, I do supplement with B12 and D3 also. Like my family, for some reason, we're all just get deficient in vitamin D, which is yep. interesting. We're in Florida, but um, I well, guess we just don't like absorb money. it. That's the same thing in India. Like a lot of people here do have a vitamin D deficiency as well. Um, so, and I, I, and we're, like you know where the sun is and out and about yeah. but um yeah it, it is something that's very common here it's a very common d- deficiency here as well um but um why is yeah, that though? that's so but, crazy uh, when i look at the research work on vitamin d deficiencies i find the values are different and so the uh, 
I don't, I'm not very concerned about vitamin D deficiency because if you're eating well, you're getting in all your nutrients in. They're finding that when some people who are, have underlying factors like they are obese and their vitamin D is low, then there is an increased risk of, uh, um, risk of certain dis- other diseases. But the thing is, if you're eating badly, you're not going to get much vitamin D. Now, mm. I, I drink milk, you know, so that's got vitamin D. It's fortified with vitamin D, but many cereals are fortified with vitamin D too. Mm. And uh, you can just, uh, you know, have fatty fish or other foods that will contain. Okay. But I still, I'm not, I don't know if the measurements they're saying is important is, is really, um, uh, I don't know if the evidence is there yet, so I wouldn't worry, especially if in India where you are in the sun, it would be um, unusual for you to have a vitamin D deficiency. I wonder how often they change those value charts of like... It, it all depends on the research, and then the research reaches the doctors, uh, mm-hmm. or, or else the doctors start believing things. They don't really study nutrition. Mm-hmm. I remember about 20 years ago, everybody was, all the doctors were recommending vitamin E. Now you never hear about vitamin E because now you're so true. It. Yeah. And then also if you take a vitamin D supplement, it doesn't necessarily increase your vitamin D. It depends on the supplement and supplements are not regulated. Uh-huh. Mm. Well, it's, it's so hard. That's why you need a dietitian. Because <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Yeah. trying to do that through a Google search, you can get a lot of mm, misinformation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, we got to hire May. Um, if <laughs> one day we'll be able to <laughs> get dietary. When will that day come? Yeah, no, actually <laughs> today. Let's utilize it now. <laughs> but our next one, I'll go, let you go ahead, Jacqueline. All right, cool. Okay, so dogs evolved puppy eyes to manipulate humans. That puppy dog look that your canine companion gives you is completely adorable, Mm. totally intentional, and something that they've developed since they've become man's best friend. In 2019, a study was there in the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences explaining that domesticated dogs have evolved to have facial muscles around their eyes that wild wolves lack. Aww. I actually knew this. I I actually saw this. Yeah, in in a documentary, I was watching just about the evolution and of, of everything and how, you know, they, like they were, they just evolved from, from wolves, but only because when they would see these nomadic humans, they realized that, you know, humans realized that, wait a minute, if we kept these wolves or dogs around, they would actually protect us because they would like bark and stuff. If, like there were other things or, you know, other animals coming. And so what they would do is in response to that, they would like just throw some food at them. And so the dogs realized, oh, we'd get food but but they like it if we protect them and so they just evolved into like keep you know they just wanted to always protect us um and they evolved from that and the wild ones like the wolves and stuff who just didn't get it who didn't evolve into that kind of knowledge they just stayed wild and wolfy and the other ones the the domesticated ones you know started becoming domesticated and friendlier and friendlier and friendlier they just realized that that's going to get us food and that's going to help us with our survival so um they were really smart they're they're a lot smarter than we think. <laughs> what type of wolf this is one, that, May? This one is very smart. He, he's a <laughs> rescue, so he's a multi but, but of course, oh. I call him a multi-poo because those are expensive dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he does control my life. And, yes. <laughs> and uh, he's been the, they best, all do. Uh, the best friend during the quarantine. Animals are literally the best. Talk about like stress reliever. And I think this is why a lot of people got them in quarantine and gave them a home because it's just endless love. And And I love that. I always say if you if you're not successful at dating, get a dog. Because when when you come home and you it's late and you don't look so great, he's still happy to see you. (laughs) It's the happiest. I mean, if you're dating someone, they're always, what? (laughs) Yeah. Falco's whole butt just goes boom, side to side whenever I walk in the door and just, he can't control his body. He's just so happy. (laughs) Johannes, thank you for your time, but you're no longer needed. (laughs) Falco. (laughs) I'm kidding. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, You'll, you'll, you'll like this, May. You guys can't. I, I hope he's not in here. 
<laughs> I got, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I got uh, Johannes a Tesla for Christmas. Wow. It's yeah. Fantastic. He's oh my god. He's gonna love that. Yeah, he he's gonna be he's been wanting one forever. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking oh! about that. Oh, <laughs> oh that's and he's going to oh, he's gonna mm-hmm. love it. you're gonna love it. I know. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's for me too. <laughs> yeah. Amanda secretly gets it for herself. Hey, I got it for you, Johannes. Yeah, here. <laughs> oh, I'll drive. Yeah. Oh, I, I gotta stop. I don't even, I don't want to ruin it. All right. The next one is, or our last one is mm-hmm. the heads of Easter Island have bodies. The iconic, I- iconic stone heads protruding from the ground on Easter Island are familiar to most, but many don't realize what lies beneath the surface. In 1919, archaeologists studying the hundreds of stone statues on the Pacific Island excavated two of the figures revealing full torsos, which me- measures lar- as high as 33 feet. Wow. Oof, that's crazy. scary. Our earth is wild. Yeah. <laughs> How it just like <laughs> continues to Aliens. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. real. Mm-hmm. Have you watched, um, I forget what the documentary is. It's about the ocean and it just, how deep it goes down. And it's like Mount Everest, taller than Mount Everest down there. And then there's another layer of water. That's a different uh, consistency that only other animals can live down there. It's like literal aliens. Yeah. yeah. It's so crazy. We have no idea what we're even like, like, I think not even like half of what our planet has in store. We have absolutely no idea. It's just, you know, there's so much undiscovered world <laughs> that, with, I mean. And with that, May, will you be going um, to space anytime soon? Or if you have the opportunity, would you go? Well, I don't think I'll be number one on their list. First of all, I would have to train for two years to be an astronaut, you know. But she could. Uh, yeah. But she will. <laughs> And then I would like to go when it's kind of there's a first class and not an economy so that I can, you know, have a lovely living room to sit in and, and have a, um, you know, meal served or something, you know, but at the moment they just sit in their suits. So uh, let's just see. And then on the other side, I would like there to be a lovely home for me. And uh, so I think that could be a, take a while because they would have to, first of all, get all the, all the equipment there and then all mm. the astronauts would have to be engineers and build me a lovely home. So I don't think I'm a priority on their schedule. <laughs> but if all especially if all you keep adding a lovely okay. home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. They're, they're going to wait a little bit for you, but it's okay. It's, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll go great. on the trip you're on because that sounds great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, be free of yeah. We'll, be, we'll be having fun. Uh, so to wrap and to wrap yeah. this up, we're just going to go into some quick questions that people inquired about you, wanting to know more about you from your fans. So what is the most important thing a woman can do to maintain a youthful appearance? And um, Stay out of the sun, don't smoke, eat very healthily, and be happy every morning because a, a smile is the most beautiful thing. Oh, that's beautiful. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. I completely agree. All right. That was lovely. Um, tell us something you like to do for fun, me. Oh, I love to go to parties. I love to meet new people. I love to travel. So those yeah. are all things that uh, have been limiting this year. And uh, soon I hope to see both of you. And we'll all sit together to do one of these. Oh, of course. I would love Let's go to Mumbai. Yeah, I agree. Let, let's <laughs> let's choose a city. Let it be Mumbai. Mm-hmm. You guys come here. <laughs> Done. Don't tell me awesome. twice. Exactly. <laughs> what is your exercise routine and how often do you do it? Well, my oh, exercise yeah. routine used to be the exercise bike and then the weights and the and stretches. And then the, of course the gyms are closed. So um I walk my dog three times a day, and uh, but he, he he sniffs a lot, so he really don't get much exercise. But then I watch an exercise vis, uh, videos like um, Be Move Dance. I like I love they do gentle exercises. They don't. It's not like core strength things. I've did that in the past, but then you start hurting yourself, so I don't mm-hmm. allow myself to get hurt anymore. I'm not pushing myself that hard. I do follow even some. 
fabulous dancing routines. I mean, I'm very bad at it, but it gets me moving. And then I have stretches I do on the carpet and weights. I want to see this. I want to see those TikToks. Some some days I'm I'm lazy. Yeah. Can you can you please upload your dance routines on TikTok? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I would like to see those. Okay. Yeah, I'm my sister now and nodding. She'll think, oh yeah, they will be funny. But <laughs> I'll I'll send you some Bollywood choreography there as well. Go. Yes, I'd love that. You guys can do duets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will do how I'm, how I do it starting, which is terrible, and then let's see if I carry on practicing if I get better. <laughs> of course you will. Oh my gosh. We'll send you we'll send you the outfit and everything to go along with it. I mean Yes. Yeah. I was thinking, what do I have <laughs> to look at and lovely sorry and that I don't I haven't got something like that. Oh, that would look so stunning on you. Oh this my is God. the best yeah. idea ever. Okay, get to work on that right I now, will, Jacqueline. Tomorrow, first thing. Done. Yeah. <laughs> can you just send all of us the same outfits and then we can all do it. And do it yeah. together. <laughs> and edit oh. it together. Okay, I'm working on this. This is my next project. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not that you don't have enough on your plate already, but <laughs> just go ahead and add that to it. That'd be good. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care. This is the most important thing right now. <laughs> what was that, May? No, same outfit, same routine. Yeah. And, just, yeah. Um, and then when we get together, we can do it together. But in the meantime, we'll just work on it here. Practice. In- individually. Practice. Done and done. Well, thank you so much, May, for being on today and taking time out of your schedule to hang out with us. Love catching up with you both always, every single yes. time I can. And and thank you guys for listening to the Feels Good podcast. Make sure you check out awesome. May, get her book, and make sure you subscribe to her on every single platform there is. Follow her on TikTok because she has dances coming soon. Oh, yes. Thank you, May, so much. Sending lots of love and wishes your way. Make a plan. Your wonderful work inspiring many people worldwide. It's so important. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you. May. Thanks, Amanda. Bye, Bye, guys. guys.